Hi everyone, today I'm addressing CompTIA's troubleshooting methodology in eight steps. The way it is broken down for IETF plus students or ITF fundamentals. The troubleshooting methodology is a great way to understand how to troubleshoot a problem. What I'm going to do, to do is go through each step and help you understand how you would actually apply them if you were using this methodology. So like I said, it's eight steps. The first step is identify the problem. Step two, uh, research knowledge base. Step three, establish a theory of probable cause. Step four, test your theory. Step five, establish a plan of action. And step six, you're going to implement a solution. After that, you're gonna to go to step seven where you're going to verify full system functionality. And step eight, you're going to document your findings. Now, what does all this mean? Let's walk through the steps once again, but this time, talk about them in a little bit more detail. Okay, let's start with identifying the problem. There are a lot of steps to consider when you're at this phase. Why? Because this is where you're gathering information. That's one thing you're gonna do. You're obviously going to be questioning the user, right? Because the user is probably the one who issued the ticket to begin with. So you're going to gather information. You're going to question the user. You're going to identify symptoms. What are the symptoms? What do you see? What do you hear? They may give you some kind of understanding of what the problem is. Uh, you're going to also try to look at multiple problems individually because you know what? There may be more than one problem. Now this time you don't want to connect the different problems because you're just you're in the gathering stage. So just treat them individually. And you also want to determine if anything has changed. For example, you know, did the, did the internet go out the day before? You know, it may have impacted what has happened uh, to this particular problem that you're encountering. And also a very important step that you want to do at this particular time is to be able to duplicate the problem. And this may occur, for example, after questioning the end user and maybe they're walking you through the process over the phone or you could tap into the end user's computer remotely to duplicate the problem that way. But this is very important. You also want to go to step two, which is to research knowledge base because you may need to understand what the symptoms are. Uh, maybe you never encountered the problem before. So researching the knowledge base could be useful at this particular juncture. That's step two. Then you're gonna to go to step three, which is establish a theory of probable cause. And this is pretty much like you would approach a science project. You know, you have ideas, you have theories, and you want to explore what those options are. Uh, during this phase, you wanna consider some things. One, you want to say, question the obvious. You know, maybe the power's not on, right? Uh, you may also too want to take multiple approaches to the problem. And you also want to do what they call divide and conquer. So you have several theories, but you don't want to be stuck with those three. You want to be able to eliminate at least two of them and come up with one that's going to get you closer to the root cause. That's what they mean by divide and conquer. Next, you want to go ahead and test those theories. Now, here's a really crucial phase to be at, right? Because while you're testing these theories, you may actually discover that none of your theories are actually the right solution. Uh, you may also find that maybe this problem is above your head. Maybe you just don't have the expertise to actually fix it, uh, and or your theories is just not working out, in which case you may decide at that point to escalate the problem. And when they use the term escalate, basically that means that you're passing the problem on to someone else who has more expert knowledge of the situation. Um, sometimes they refer to this process as tier one, tier two, tier three, um, <clears throat> which could be one, passing it on to someone else who has uh, expertise in a particular area, or you may even wind up having to go to, say, an outside contractor to fix the problem. So this is what you may encounter when you are testing the theory of probable cause. But let's just say your theories worked and you were able to divide and conquer, you pretty much close to getting to the root cause, you're then gonna go ahead and establish a plan of action. There are three things that you should consider when you are at this phase. One, should you repair? 
Two, should you replace? Or three, should you just simply ignore? Now, this is a, a practical concern in many ways, right? Because it may have boiled down to cost. But let's just say money is not an issue. You go ahead, you repair, you replace. Now you're ready to implement a solution. And before you do this, though, there's actually one important thing to consider again. What if you do not have the authority to implement the solution? Then you may actually have to, just like you did when you were testing out the theory, escalate the problem. You may have to escalate to another admin or another technician who actually has the authority to go into the management interface that is required to fix the problem to actually implement the solution. But let's just say that's not necessary. No need to escalate. Uh, you have the authority. Go ahead and implement the solution. And you do. And you know what? You fixed it. It seems like everything is working. Does that mean that you have now finally resolved this problem? Yes and no. Things may be working, but it actually may not be the right solution or the solution you came up with is only temporary. That's when you have to go into verifying full system functionality, and that's step seven. Now, what does that entail? Well, you found a solution, right? But you may have not found the right one, so you have to turn to, say, maybe the company's documentation uh, that tells you what the actual solution is. So you tweak that, make sure you do the absolute right thing, verify full system functionality, and then you're ready to go to the final step, which is step eight, which is to document findings. And when you document findings, this is really important, right? Because this is now going to become information that is going to be stored possibly in a database that could be useful to other IT professionals who encounter a similar problem like that in the future. You also will probably use this kind of information for say FAQs that may go onto a website. Uh, so when customers come across a similar problem, they can be guided through the steps online without having to talk to an actual IT help desk professional. So those are the basic eight steps to CompTIA's troubleshooting methodology. Now obviously when you get to become a professional, you may not find yourself following every single step in order. Uh, the way it's written out in CompTIA's model, uh, you'll start to do it intuitively. But it's really important to understand these steps, especially if you're just starting out. My name is Tim Brown. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tim B's Tech Talk. Check me out next time.